Hello, welcome to this third video in this series of videos discussing integrating trig powers. My name is Nakaya Rimmer, and I'm here to help, hopefully help you understand how the methods work and basically to help you be able to integrate more functions. Uh, I'm gonna do two examples. Um, in previous videos, what we've done is looked at what happens when uh, we're integrating powers of sines and cosines, okay? And the two examples we've had previously have both been the type where the there's an odd power present that's bigger than one. So now we enter into the next level where, no, no, there is no odd power present. Only even powers are present. Maybe there's um, sines and cosines. Maybe they're just one or the other. It doesn't have to be that there's both of them there. But in the absence of an odd power, here's how you should go about the problem. Um, my example is going to be just with the power of cosine. So it's cosine who's raised to the fourth. And it's just a cosine of x. Uh, 32 is out front there just to cancel some fractions. Interested in the definite integral from 0 to pi. The area under that curve from 0 to pi. Okay. No need to factor out, convert, use sub. Only use that technique when there's an odd power present. So what do you do when there's no odd power present? What do you do if there's, the only powers that show up are even powers? Actually, you just go to an identity. There's two identities that we use called the half angle identities. We can replace sine squared with one half the quantity of one minus cosine two x. We can replace cosine squared with one half the quantity of one plus the cosine of two x. And so in our problem, what we have is cosine who's to the fourth. And so what we're going to do with that is basically make that cosine squared and cosine squared. Okay. We could definitely write it as cosine squared quantity squared. We could do that too. Um, they, they both, both things work. But here I'm just going to replace both of these guys with what's above there. One half the quantity of one plus the cosine of 2x. Okay. All right, great. Well. What we're going to have then is um, the half and the half is a fourth going to come out and turn that 30 into 32 into an eight. And then let's go ahead and foil this out. We have one plus two of those cosine two X's plus the cosine squared on two X. So we're in the process of doing this. We know how to integrate one. We know how to integrate the cosine of two X. What do we do about this cosine squared on 2x? Nothing wrong with doing it again. We have an even power. So when you go from x, when you use a half angle identity, it goes to twice x. So what do you think is going to happen when you have a 2x and use the half angle identity? It's going to go to 4x. One half the quantity of 1 plus the cosine on 4x. Okay. The reason why we're doing this is because we're breaking it down into simpler pieces. Each piece we can integrate without trouble. Let's distribute the half in. There might be a little bit of can uh, uh, combining we could do. So one half times one and one half times the cosine of four X. We have the half that's in red together with the one that's in the front of the integral there. One and a half. Let's call it an improper fraction. Let's call it three halves. All right, so we have three terms to integrate. We know how to integrate three halves. How do you get a constant? It's that constant times x. We know how to integrate the cosine of 2x. We also know how to integrate the cosine of 4x. So we're all set with this. We started with this, and we are now at this place here. But I want to tell you that um, those two, the trig integrals there, cosine of 2x and the cosine of 4x, there's something special about those two guys. On the on the interval from zero to pi. Of course, you could definitely just integrate them, okay? And you'll see. I mean, you know, the antiderivative of cosine of two x is is the half of the sine of two x, and you're plugging in a pi and a zero. I mean, you know, it's going to zero out. The two that's there and the half that's going to come from integration, they're going to cancel each other out. And yeah, this thing is going to zero out. Sine of two pi is zero. Sine of zero is zero. Yeah, this guy zeroes out. 
But I want you to know there's another way geometrically to see that. When you take a cosine function and you take the x of it and uh, cosine x function and you multiply the x by 2, doubling the inside, that accomplishes the following transformation to the function. What it does is it compresses the function in the x direction. Cosine x has a period of 2 pi. Cosine 2x has a period of pi. The graph of cosine of 2x will repeat itself every pi units. Here's a look at it. And I have them color coded here so you can see what happens with the area. Of course you're going to have zero area. The two above parts cancel with the two below parts. So if you ever see it, cosine 2x, and it's on a full period, or maybe it's on um, an interval where you have a, a multiple periods, complete periods, then you can just cancel it out and say it's a zero integral. Nothing wrong with doing the integral. Nothing wrong with just saying, oh, it's a full period, so it must be zero. I like both approaches. Uh, the other guy, cosine of 4x. Don't worry about the half. It's, it's there. We can leave it there. Uh, we could bring it with the 8, too, as well. But um, same action is going to happen. We're going to have, um, instead of a half, it's going to be 1 eighth, the sine of 2x. Or sine of 4x, sorry. You put the pi in, you put the 0 in. Talk about the sine of 4 pi, the sine of 0. Yeah, it's going to 0 out. So if multiplying by 2 cuts the period in half, multiplying by 4 cuts the period by fourths. And so when you used to have a whole period of 2 pi, for for sine of uh, for cosine of 4x, it has a period of pi over 2. The graph of this function will have two full periods. And what's above the x-axis will cancel with what's below the x-axis. It zeroes out as well. The color coding hopefully convinces you of that. And so I just want you to know they zero out. Either you integrate the zero amount or you know about periods of these functions and how the transformations work. And so they zero out. You just have that first part, and that's the easiest integral I could ever give you. Uh, what, what is 3 halves of 8? Well, the 2 turns the 8 into a 4. It's really 12. I mean, how do you integrate 1 at that point then? It's just x. Put the pi in. Put the, and the answer is 12 pi. You did it. Okay? When there's no odd power present, just put in some half-angle identities and just grind it out. Okay? And be on the lookout for when you integrate a full period of the function. All right. So there were three different types. Uh, odd power present and basically the absence of an odd power. Only even powers present. Okay. There was a third type at the bottom of the slide that I was introducing at first where it said, oh, there's really an easier way if one of these guys have a power of one. Let's go ahead and do that now. We can do it quickly. Um, what if one of them or both of them have a power of one? We'll call this example four. Here's an example. Uh, I'm trying to find the area under the curve that has cosine to the tenth and sine to the one. Abandon everything I've said on all previous videos. This is a u sub. What are you going to do? Let u be the function who is raised to the tenth. Not, not the whole thing to the tenth, just the function, the inside function who's raised to the tenth in this case. Whoever's raised to the power, the guy who isn't, you know, uh, the power of one. If both of them one, you just pick one. And so, yeah, I'm gonna let u be equal to cosine. Why? Because its derivative is already sitting there on the outside. Not exactly its derivative, but some multiple of its derivative is there. Cosine's derivative is negative sine x. And so, negative du is gonna take the place of sine x dx. Uh, u is then gonna be raised to the tenth. But that's a nice simple integral. That's Power rule in reverse. U to the 11 over 11. Keep that negative guy there. Uh, up to you whether you want to switch limits or not. I think I'm not going to switch limits here. Let's just go back and call it negative 1 11th cosine of x who's raised to the 11th. I probably should have written it as a parenthesis. Cosine x who's raised to the 11th. I really hate that notation that I have there, but that's okay. Put a pi in. Take the cosine of pi and raise it to the 11th. Take the cosine of 0 and raise it to the 11th. Uh, the cosine of pi is a negative 1. The cosine of 0 is a 1. Now be careful with the exponents here. It's easy to make a mistake. 
Um, negative one to the eleventh is a negative one. And what's ne what's after that is a the a subtraction of one to the eleventh. And so it's negative one, then take away one. It's a negative two inside with a negative one over eleven on the outside. It's just two over eleven. Here's the visual of it. Um, the two parts um, double up. They each have one over eleven. Okay, all right, that's it for integrating powers of sine and cosine. All right, in our next video, we'll attack the second bullet point where we want to integrate powers of tangent and secant. Talk about the concept and do a bunch of examples. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, this video went over 10 minutes. That's okay, though. Hopefully, you, um, you're able to uh, understand what's going on and uh, follow. If you're not, don't be afraid. Ask me any questions you like. Um, and I'll see you in the next video.